What's better? What's the pros and cons? What's the difference? What is all this about? I've received so many questions that I decided to make a dedicated video about this, even though I will actually be using an excerpt from my OBS version 23 update video where I did a breakdown of it, but I left out a couple details by accident. I spent a long time trying to make sure everything was in there, but naturally something's always overlooked. So I'm going to add in those extra details and show some more quality comparisons and do a little bit more of a deep dive. I'm Evil's Vox here to make tech easier and more fun. And to summarize in a nutshell, OBS has updated the way that they use the NVIDIA NV Ink encoder within their software in the upcoming version 23 update. And I have a full explanation from the excerpt that I will play in a minute for you, but they have reworked it to be better performing and give you more direct control over the encoder that you didn't have access to before, which is pretty cool and kind of a big deal and eventually will benefit all GPUs in terms of performance. But there's some confusion regarding whether it benefits quality and things like that. And as I will say in the clip, the quality benefits come specifically from RTX 20 series Turing graphics cards. They have a bigger, newer NV Ink chip that is responsible for the quality increase. That being said, you could theoretically squeeze more quality out of your live stream, especially if you're on an older card with these new settings, but the settings themselves do not directly affect quality. And I do want to discuss some of the actual hardware changes in a moment. So the new NV Ink settings and options and capabilities within OBS Studio do work with all NV Ink capable graphics cards, specifically from 700 series and newer. You can, you know, you, you can sort of run them on the 600 series, but I'm told that there is some issues with that and generally it's not recommended. And so I'm not sure, but OBS may actually disable it for those cards, at which point you would not be able to. However, it is validated as working as intended and, you know, benefiting on 700 series NVIDIA graphics cards and newer. So you can use it on all graphics cards, not just the new RTX cards. So that's a big thing that I left out of my other video. And this update does not address the GPU allocation bug, where if you have a game using up most of your GPU and it's in focus, OBS's performance degrades. I released a kind of ranty FAQ video about this and people thought the new NV Ink might address it. It can help. It can help with it by reducing the GPU load by being more efficient, but it is not a direct addressing of that or fix for that in the slightest. So don't think that. <laughs> as far as quality goes of NV Ink itself, I did want to add and say at some point in a video, the GTX 1060 through the 1080 Ti for the most part has the same quality and capability of NV Ink across all of those cards. It's weaker on the 1050 Ti and lower, and it's lower quality and performing on older graphics cards each generation, but the 1060 through the 1080 Ti for normal game streaming uses has the same quality. The 2060 through the 2080 Ti for now also have the same quality between them. So the 2060 will have the same NV Ink as the 2080 Ti and every card in between. That could change in the future. NVIDIA is always trying to come up with more features to utilize, you know, the extra cores and tensor cores and things like that on the cards. So you may see some that benefit the newer card, you know, the higher end cards better than the lower end cards. But in terms of raw encoding speed, they are actually exactly the same. If you actually look at NVIDIA's reference matrix uh, with regards to NV Ink and what the cards support and things like that, you will notice that the 1080 and 1080 Ti actually have two chips for NV Ink. And so for Higher level applications where you're running multiple NV Ink streams at once back and forth, you can actually get more out of it due to the extra NV Ink capabilities on the 1080 Ti. But for normal OBS use or most OBS use at all and video rendering and like normal programs, you know, unless you have some complex way of accessing both streams, it's still the same as the 1060 and things like that. But they did decrease that back to one for even the 2080 Ti and the 2080 for all of the 20 series. Uh, they found that they couldn't get the quality and performance they needed out of the dual chip layout. And so they went, reduced it back to one and simply made it bigger. There's now more silicon dedicated to NV Ink on those cards. But again, this is just a hardware change. This is just for how this affects the Turing cards. In terms of the actual OBS update, there's a little bit of a difference. And I'm going to go on and play the clip from my OBS update video because I do a really good job that I fact-checked with multiple people of explaining the differences. Let's play that. 
The next major change in this update is what's been commonly referred to as the new Envy Ink. And again, I want to do a little bit of myth busting here. The actual quality improvements of Envy Ink on Nvidia's new RTX 20 series Turing graphics cards is primarily a hardware change. There is a physical Envy Ink chip on the card that has been altered and improved to increase quality. This applies to any use of the Envy Ink encoder with these cards in any program. Old OBS, updated OBS, video editing software, anything. The new Envy Ink settings in this OBS update can help you squeeze a little bit more quality out of your stream by means of giving you more control, but it's not a direct quality improvement. That's not what the point of it is. It is actually a hardware improvement on those 20 series cards. I'm recording a video and I got a kitty climbing all over me. Say hello. Not to me, to them. Hello, I am Stream Kitty. Also, this new encoding pipeline does not work on Windows 7. OBS will fall back to the old methods that I explained in a moment on Windows 7. This should, however, work on Windows 8.1 and obviously Windows 10. This new Envy Ink is a complete rework of how OBS interacts with the GPU for GPU-based encoding. In previous versions of OBS, it was designed to, to handle only raw video frames in system memory, or RAM. The frames had to be copied from the GPU's VRAM to RAM and then sent off to the encoder, which at the time was predominantly X264 that ran on your CPU. So that design made sense at the time, and sending it from GPU to RAM to CPU for encoding. However, because of this design, that meant that when using GPU encoding, like Envy Ink, it would have to copy frames from VRAM to RAM and then be sent off to Envy Ink, which then would be copied back from RAM to VRAM again, resulting in an unnecessary round trip due to that video pipeline design. This uses up more resources and bandwidth than is necessary and adds a little bit of latency. In the latest version of OBS, there's now an additional discrete video pipeline for GPU encoders that can take a, a texture directly without moving any raw frames out of VRAM. This eliminates the unnecessary VRAM to RAM to VRAM round trip, thus maximizing the potential performance of hardware encoders such as Envy Ink and reducing the impact that it might have on the games that you're running while streaming or recording. On higher end systems where things were already running smoothly, you may not notice any difference, but in some side by side comparisons, you could see as much as 5 to 10 frames per second, or even more in some weird scenarios maybe, increase in game, and that scales as hardware gets worse. Along with this update came more direct access to the Envy Ink tools and some new quality controls. They're named a little silly, but they let you do some cool stuff if you're in the OBS's advanced output mode. Two-pass encoding is now no longer a direct option, but it is automatically part of the max quality preset. This determines how much load is put on the Envy Ink encoder to get the most quality. Most people can just use max quality and be fine, but if you're getting encoder overloaded errors, lower it to quality to see if that improves. Generally speaking, profile should always be set to high for these kinds of streaming purposes. It tunes the encoder in a way that just needs to be set to that. Look Ahead and Psycho Visual Tuning are new options. Look Ahead allows the encoder to dynamically change the amount of B frames between zero and the max number that you input at the bottom of the UI where it says max B frames. These are frames used to get the most quality out of your footage. They're kind of like reference frames at full quality, but they require a lot of bandwidth. So on high motion content, you don't always want a ton of those as they can reduce quality without enough bitrate assigned to your stream. Look Ahead helps save you some trouble by automatically determining how much to use based on the frames or based on your content. Psycho Visual Tuning improves image quality on moving footage by enabling the Rate Distortion Optimization, which is just a setting within the encoder itself that affects high motion footage. For high motion content, shooters, action games, things like that, set max B frames to 2. For low motion content, such as card games or desktop capture, things like that, you can increase this to 4. However, if you do see pixelization on stream, consider reducing this back to 2. Keyframe interval needs to be set for two as for streaming on Twitch and YouTube as always, and set your max bit rate according to your streaming service and upload speed as usual. I have a whole video on this in the description if you're interested. Also, you do still technically have the option of offloading encoding onto a second GPU here, but that will cause OBS to fall back to the old Envy Ink implementation since you can't share this information between GPUs directly. Either way, keep in mind that this is generally a bad idea despite how many people have been suggesting it with my recent videos and does not address that GPU utilization issue that I talked about in my recent 
kind of ranty, it was more like a FAQ video than anything. You see, OBS itself still needs to render and composite on the GPU that your game or display is running on, and that's where the bulk of OBS's GPU usage and impact comes from. Encoding is very efficient, and it's on its own chip on the GPU, so offloading that not only does not help your performance, but it more or less negates any of this updated framework's benefits, if you were able to do it within the new NV Inc. anyway. It's also worth noting that within the new NV Inc, I am saying that wrong now, <laughs> you will be unable to apply rescaling during output. If you want a different output resolution than your canvas, you'll have to apply it universally in the video settings tab. Sucks, but it's worth the trade-off. If you do enable rescale output in the encoder settings for NV Inc, OBS will fall back to using the old NV Inc implement implementation again. The cool thing here is that, theoretically, this rework can be applied to all GPUs in the future. Currently, the only iteration is for NVIDIA cards, and I can't even begin to speculate when AMD or Intel support will be added, but the work done here can benefit everyone in the end. It is worth noting here that there's a little bit of weirdness with the look-ahead and psycho-visual tuning features. On RTX cards, 20 series Turing cards, these use both the NV Inc hardware and the CUDA hardware, the normal CUDA hardware, to really run them super hardcore and get much better results out of them. Whereas on older graphics cards, it just uses CUDA. And so this combination of NV Inc plus CUDA usage is kind of running into that GPU allocation issue that I've mentioned, which is on older cards, you're actually demanding more of the GPU, significantly more of the GPU using this recording or rendering method, recording method, encoding method, that's the word I'm looking for, than normal and then it is actually taking from RTX cards. So worth noting there. Something I did want to add to that clip, the RDO, the rate distortion optimization that is enabled through the psycho visual tuning. This is something typically reserved for X264 medium preset, which is part of why it's so high quality and sort of an X264 fast, which is why the psycho visual tuning upgrade is something that kind of gives it its edge and is actually a lot better on the Turing graphics cards, even though you can enable it on the older ones. The only real disadvantage, I had some people asking like pros and cons between the new and old NV Inc. For the most part, you should always be using the new one because it's going to perform better and run better and do everything better. But the only real disadvantage to the new NV Inc. is that inability to check the rescale output box on the encoder. Now, it's always been more efficient to do this in the video tab because it does it on the actual GPU render load, which does the scaling, and it can do that really efficiently and doesn't take up much resources, and is generally the best way to go. But if you want to be able to stream and record at different resolutions, you can't really do that here unless you're using X264 for your streaming and new NV Inc for recording. That way you only rescale during the X264 encode. So that also means that if you have your scaled resolution set in the video tab like I recommended. If you use the replay buffer, it will be recording that in the quality of, or in the resolution of that scaled resolution set in your video tab. So you would be unable to get native resolution, you know, full 1080p or whatever replay buffer if you have it set scaled to 720p or 864 or 900p or whatever. I think it's worth the trade-off for the extra performance benefit. And honestly, if you're throwing enough bitrate at your recordings, especially if it's a replay buffer, like your, your recordings aren't going to be that long in the first place, throw a high enough CRF value, like a 12 or a 14 at it, or a high enough bitrate, and something like that doesn't really matter, in my opinion, because you can still scale it back up and mostly maintain quality. In terms of recommended settings, uh, NVIDIA's recommended settings for fast-paced games, action games, shooters, things like that, is to set it to CBR, of course, because you have to for streaming, but then full max bitrate of 6K or 8K, depending on if you want to push Twitch past its recommended limits. I stick with 6K for all of my testing and samples here. Keyframe interval, two seconds is required, but then preset is max quality, which enables two-pass encoding, and it's just going to be the best. Profile set to high, of course, and then turn look ahead off and turn on psycho visual tuning, and then leave max B frames at two. This is recommended for fast-paced games. For slower-paced games, it's, or for recordings, if you're doing recordings at high bit rate, it's recommended to turn on look ahead and leave max B frames at four, or set it to four, rather. Uh, this can be extended during recording because you have enough bandwidth in your bit rate to have those bigger B frames and not get pixelization. Whereas during live streaming, you don't have enough in your small live streaming bit rate to have multiple B frames back to back to back. 
eating up bandwidth. And I have a full explanation in that previous clip that kind of explains what they are. Four can look better. I, I'm showing, I have some, I recorded some tests here. I took a lossless recording using the UT video lossless encoding that I showed off in a previous video of, uh, my, of a game of Apex Legends captured via a capture card at full RGB. So as close to lossless as I could get it, recorded it in UT video, and then ran that as a media source through OBS on a 20 series card, a 2080, at a few different settings. I did the new NV Inc. at mm, the recommended settings of look ahead off and two B frames, and then through the slower preset of look ahead on and four B frames, and then I ran it through old, old NV Inc., and I ran it through X264 fast, and I tried running it through QuickSync, but apparently there's some issue with QuickSync drivers in OBS right now that just cause it to crash, so I couldn't test that right now. That sucks. But you can actually turn on, of course, four B frames and look ahead for fast-paced action games, and in some scenarios, it's going to look better. But in many other scenarios, it's going to look a lot worse, as there's going to be, you know, some weird situations where you might actually get a sharper feed on a certain still frame somewhere, as I found in my testing, but then when you actually end up in situations where it just can't handle what's happening, you're going to get a lot more pixelation or macro blocking or little squares all over your image than you would with the 2B frames. Um, in terms of comparing new Envy Ink versus old, especially since I'm running on a 20 series card, honestly, I could not find much discernible difference. Uh, it was actually comparing the 4B frame new Envy Ink versus old Envy Ink, where I was able to notice a lot more of that more pixelization having that 4B frames enabled, whereas with the 2B frames, it looked nearly identical. There's some frames I managed to find where it was a little bit sharper on the new NV ink, but for the most part, again, as I've said over and over, this is not meant to be a quality increase in the first place, especially on newer capable hardware. Comparing the new NV ink to X264 Fast, you will notice in some scenarios, which I got some complaints about, that NV ink aims to kind of smooth out some areas in order to avoid pixelization, whereas X264 tries to keep all those crispy details, but then you end up with a lot of jagged edges or pixelation and little details that make it look a little gnarly or messy or nasty, um, and even adds some haloing to text that is less obvious on Envy Ink. And so that's kind of a difference in approach, is that Envy Ink aims to kind of smooth out some of the pixelization to keep a cleaner looking image, whereas X264 is more, at least with the tuning that I used here, was more focused on keeping it sharp at the risk of having a lot more added pixelization. Again, recommended recording settings. These are from NVIDIA, which are VBR 40 megabits per second with a max of 60 megabits per second, two, key, two keyframe intervals still, and then max quality high, look ahead, psychovisual tuning on, and four max B frames. I record at ridiculously high bit rates. 40 megabits would, is not a limit that I keep myself to, but for most people, that's probably fine. But yeah, this is just a rehash, just hopefully a complete start to finish explanation here of what's going on with this new Envy Ink stuff and what you need to know about it. And as far as the actual OBS update goes, again, in the future, this could theoretically apply to at least AMD GPU encoding and theoretically iGPU quick sync stuff as well. But it could be years before that ever happens. I have no idea when that's coming. I'm not going to hype it up as if that's next but it's certainly within the realm of possibility with this framework change that the OBS devs have made. So go check out my OBS version 23 update video if you missed it. Uh, go check out my NV Inc. quality comparison with my RTX 2080 if you missed that. Got a lot of streaming videos going on. 